It's not horror. What do you mean it's not horror? Yeah, that's right. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy John from Project Ellsworth, and I'm with you today to show you guys another section of my non-horror collection. It's true. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Man cannot live on horror alone. Sad but true. Yeah, it's true. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. All right, kicking things off today is my trilogy for Back to the Future. Two of these three movies are absolutely fantastic. The third one, I'm not nuts about. I like it. I mean, it's it's fine enough. It's okay. But I don't think it's as good as the first two. And the second one, in my opinion, is not nearly as good as the first movie or the original Back to the Future. I've been seeing all kinds of stuff for this in Walmart lately. I'm seeing... NECA figures and like Toonie Terrors looking figures, but obviously they're not terror figures. But I don't know what anniversary it is, to be honest with you. I don't remember what year or what this is or what year it was supposed to take place. I guess I'm just not up to snuff with my Back to the Future knowledge, Back to the Future knowledge. But there you go, Back to the Future trilogy on standard DVD. I think there's like 4Ks of that out now too, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure at the very least there's Blu-rays. All right, next up is Jennifer Lopez and Alex O'Laughlin in The Breakup Plan. I don't know if I've ever seen this, and I am 100% certain that my wife bought this. So I don't know really what this is other than, does that say backup plan? The backup plan. Did I say breakup plan? Whatever it is. Them two are in it, and I ain't seen it. And I'm not reading all that. It's way too much. All right, next up is... Here's one that I never see anybody ever talking about is Bad Boys, but not the Will Smith, Martin Lawrence Bad Boys, Sean Penn in Bad Boys. This movie is phenomenal. This was way years and years and years before that Will Smith movie ever existed. Uh, here we go. Mick O'Brien, which is Sean Penn, is a young Chicago street thug torn between the line of petty crime and the love of his girlfriend, portrayed by Ali Sheedy. But when the heist of a local drug dealer goes tragically wrong, Mick is sentenced to a brutal juvenile prison where the violence is a rite of passage and respect is measured in vengeance. Can a bad boy on the edge of salvation find the heart to survive a manhood on the verge of murder? Clancy Brown, Rennie Santoni, and Eric Gurry, G-U-R-R-Y, that is definitely Gurry, Co-star in this gritty drama that sealed Sean Penn's reputation as the greatest young actor of his generation. Bad Boys is now presented completely uncut, complete and uncut, including footage not seen in previous DVD versions. If you haven't seen this flick, and I think there's a really, really good chance that a lot of you have not seen this flick, check this movie out. It's awesome. Definitely my introduction to Sean Penn. Unless that was Fast Times, but I think it was that. I think I saw that first. All right, next up is the other movies we were talking. I was just talking, referring to Bad Boys and Bad Boys Two. These are really good. They're fun movies. I have not seen uh, Bad Boys for Life yet, the third movie that just came out in the last year. I think it may have come out right when the pandemic started, or shortly thereafter, or shortly before. I don't remember. But I have not seen that yet, and I do not own it yet. I probably will get that eventually. I just haven't gotten around to it. Too busy buying horror movies. All right, next up is another absolute classic, The Bad News Bears. Love, love, love The Bad News Bears. Such a fantastic movie. This is about, like, a dysfunctional baseball team with a alcoholic coach. Really, really cool. <clears throat> a major surprise is one of 1976's top grossing films, The Bad News Bears, is a movie about children that is refreshing, utterly believable, and quite cleverly funny. Walter Matthau is, an absolute is at his absolute best as the grumbling, beer-guzzling former minor league pitcher who gets roped into coaching <clears throat> a band of half-pint misfits, somewhat loosely called a team. With this bunch in uniform, it's impossible to get caught up 
it is impossible to get caught up in the suburban competitive spirit. That doesn't even make sense. Bunch in uniform. It's impossible to get caught up in the suburban competitive spirit that drives other adults to extremes of parenting discipline. So instead of bears having, so instead the bears have a good time. Forgot how to read, ladies and gentlemen. But this movie's great. This is another one I have to assume that you guys have seen. This has not Arlie Ermy, Jackie Earl Haley, the dude who played uh, Freddy Krueger in the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. He's in it. Walter Matthau's in it, and her. <laughs> I can't remember what her name is. Hold on, let me see if I can see her. Where's her name? Tatum O'Neill. She's in it. This is really, really good. They remade this a few years ago with Billy Bob Thornton, and it was all right, but nothing compared to the original. That movie's fantastic. Next up is another Will Smith movie, Ali, where he portrayed Muhammad Ali. This was really good. Will Smith did a really, really good job as Muhammad Ali, transformed his body, spoke in a manner that sounded like Muhammad Ali, and this is basically like a biography story of Muhammad Ali. I'm sure everybody knows who he is. Very good movie. I don't need to go into details. It's the story of Muhammad Ali. Very good. All right, next up is something else that I have not seen. A Lot Like Love, Ashton Kutcher and Amanda Peet. I've seen Amanda Peet in a whole ton of stuff, but I've never seen this. I actually wouldn't mind watching this. I dig Ashton and I like Amanda. Uh, in the spirit of When Harry Met Sally comes A Lot Like Love, the romantic comedy that is destined that the romantic comedy about destiny and the possibilities of a chance encounter evolving into a close encounter of the happily ever after kind. Blah, 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 blah. Ashton Kutcher and Amanda Peet set off sparks as opposites who attract and have a one night, one, a, have a one flight stand from LA to New York. When the trip's over, they are two. When the trip is over, they are two. And both move on. Can't read. I'm telling you, man, don't get old. Uh, and they are two and both move on, but, re but really can't let go. As they search for love that doesn't end in disaster, they keep finding each other. And while the chemistry that first brought them together keeps generating heat, the timing is always wrong. This funny and, dis this funny and disarming story of modern romance will have you falling in love over and over again. I bet you this is probably pretty good, dude. I like a good rom-com. If it's made well and it's got a good cast, I like it. Don't hate on me. All right, next up is a fantastic movie with Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington, American Gangster. This is inspired by a true lorry. What was his name? Bumpy something, wasn't he? Bumpy, 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 Bumpy. I can't remember his name. Bumpy Washington, Bumpy Harris, whatever. Academy Award, Denzel Washington, Russell Crowe, team of the Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott, Glenn, I can't find it. I believe his name was Bumpy something, uh, Denzel's character. But he was a drug lord. He was a, 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 like a, a crime lord in New York City, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a long time since I've seen this. Yeah, New York City. All right, I'm reading it. I'm sorry to put you through that. Academy Award winners Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe team up with director Ridley Scott in this powerful epic story. Armed with ruthless and streetwise tactics and a strict sense of honor, crime boss Frank Lucas, bumpy, no, that's Denzel Washington, Rules Harlem's chaotic underworld when outcast Richard Roberts, uh, which is uh, Russell Crowe, sets out to bring Lucas' uh, multi-million dollar empire. It plunges both men into a legendary confrontation. American Gangster is a brutal and brilliant film. Bumpy, I can't remember, maybe Bumpy was the dude that Denzel Washington worked for. But I know there was a dude in this movie called Bumpy, I'm almost positive. I can't remember, maybe I'm getting my movies mixed up. Awesome flick, check it out. Love Denzel. All right, next up is American Hustle. I bought this movie, and I have not watched this movie yet. But I heard great things about it. I simply haven't watched it. I think I put this on really late one night and fell asleep. Great cast, though. Christian Bale, Bradley Cooper, Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner, and Jennifer Lawrence. And I like all of them. So this is probably really, really good. All right, and next up is another Bradley Cooper movie that I have not watched yet. American Sniper. So that's American Hustle and American Sniper, two Bradley Cooper, whatever. Still haven't watched this. I know this is based on a true story as well. One of these days I gotta get to this. I've heard great things about this movie. Is it Clint Eastwood? Clint Eastwood directed this. I didn't even realize that. All right, next up is a comedy legend, Animal House. 
Haven't seen this in a while, but I've seen it a thousand times. It is, it's about college life with, you know, the rest in peace, John Belushi. John Belushi is one of the funniest guys that's ever walked the face of the earth, I think. This is really cool. I think this is Kevin Bacon's, was this his first role ever? What year was this movie made? It was either this or Friday the 13th, but I want to say it was this. I'm not absolutely sure, and I can't see the year, even with my glasses on. I don't see what year this was made. Doesn't matter. It was no, 1978. So this was before Friday the 13th. His role in this movie was not very big, but that's a fantastic movie. I, I have to assume that you've all seen Animal House by now. All right, next up is Derek Luke and Denzel Washington and Antoine Fisher. This is another one that I have seen, but this, I, I guarantee it's been a decade and a half since I've seen this probably. Denzel Washington makes his triumphant direct, uh, directorial debut, <clears throat> and Luke and uh, Derek Luke shines in his first big screen role in this gripping story of survival and triumph. Inspired by the true life experiences of the title character, Antoine Fisher tells the compelling story of a troubled sailor who is ordered to see a naval psychiatrist about his volatile temper. Little does he know that his first step into the doctor's office will lead him on a remarkable emotional journey to confront his painful past and connect him with the family that he never knew. This was a cool movie too. I wish I remembered it better. I really should revisit that. Maybe I should do like a whole bunch of Denzel movies sometime. I love Denzel and that was a great movie. Unfortunately, I don't remember it all that well. All right. I, gotta, I wonder what that is. I watch all these movies and it's like I forget most of them. It, it like blacks it by blanket out of my mind and that sucks. All right. Next up is another one that I'm assuming most of you have seen. Apollo 13 with Tom Hanks. Kevin Bacon's in this too. Kevin Bacon, Bill Paxton, Gary Sinise, and Ed Harris. This movie was made the year after Forrest Gump was made. And there was a lot of talk that they thought Tom Hanks was going to win the Academy Award for Best Actor three years in a row as a result of this movie. This is awesome. He's a, uh, an astronaut. There are a group of astronauts. They go up into outer space on the Apollo 13, also based on a true story. Stuff goes sideways, and they get stuck in outer space in this spaceship, and it's about, uh, it's about their struggle and uh, their will to survive you know, to get home. Very, very good movie. My mind went blank there. All right, next up, another outer space movie, Armageddon. This is a movie that I just don't get tired of watching. There's a lot of those that I have in my collection, but if I turn on the TV right now and this movie's on, I'm watching it. I can't turn it off. I cry every time I see it. Absolutely love this movie. The ending of this movie is enough to just emotionally just destroy you and tear your heart out. Awesome movie, Bruce Willis, Ben Affleck, uh, Liv Tyler. Very, very cool, very star-studded cast in this movie. Steve Buscemi, um, Michael Clark Duncan. Uh, there's more than that. What's that blonde hair guy's name? Wilson. Owen Wilson's in it. Uh, there's a lot of people. Ed Harris. Is Ed Harris in this movie? No. Billy Bob Thornton is in this movie. Ed Harris is in this movie. <laughs> All right. Very, very good, man. All right, next up, one of my favorite comedies of all time, The Big Lebowski. Basically about a guy who has, his name is the same as somebody else who's got some bad guys looking for him and they wind up breaking into the wrong guy's house, into the dude's house and pissing on his rug. And the movie basically is the story of the dude trying to get his rug re uh, replaced. As ridiculous as that sounds, this movie's fantastic. John Goodman is comedy brilliance in The Big Lebowski. Jeff Bridges is wonderful, and it's definitely my favorite role by him. And this is definitely a Jeff Bridges movie. You know, don't don't get me wrong, but John Goodman's character in this movie is just what comedy movies are made of. It's just he's brilliant in that movie. Next up is Billy Jack. This is a movie that I actually picked up because I remember it from my childhood. I re all right, I'm from Pensgrove, New Jersey. And I live just outside of, I think it's Sharptown or Woodstown. And in that town is a, a, a flea market called Cowtown. This is a good story for you guys. And in the front of Cowtown is a gigantic cowboy. And I always, when I was a little boy, called that cowboy Billy Jack because I was a fan of this movie. You guys couldn't care less about that story. 
But I always remember the big cowboy at Cowtown, which made me like Billy Jack. This dude's an Indian. I think he's having problems with like the, the authorities in a, a particular town. Uh, don't remember all the details of this either. He's a warrior, a mystic, a martyr, uh, capturing the heart and soul of a generation. Embodying all these and more, Billy Jack quickly became one of the most unorthodox and magnetic movie heroes of all time. Excuse me. Tom Laughlin charismatically plays the title character, a half-breed Native American and ex-Green Beret, returning to live in solitude on an Arizona or in an Arizona reservation. He is drawn to the Progressive Freedom School and the ideal, idealistic woman, portrayed by Dolores Taylor, who runs it. But when tensions flare between the students and narrow-minded local bigots, Jack Billy Jack becomes the school's protector. Once again, violence finds him. First released with little fanfare and dis dismissed by most, most critics, this film's gut honesty struck a chord with audiences who later made it a box office giant and a landmark film of its era. This is a really cool movie. I, I'd never see this anywhere on television. I never hear anybody talking about this movie. This movie is friggin' fantastic. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to pull this sucker and I'm going to watch this probably sometime within the next week. I haven't seen this in a long time and I love this movie. Billy Jack's great. I'm pretty sure that there's a sequel, The Return of Billy Jack or The Legacy of Billy Jack or The Legend of Billy Jack, something. I'm pretty sure there's a part two to that, at the very least a part two. And I don't know that I've ever seen it. And if I have seen it, I don't remember that thing at all. But the first one is wonderful. Big part of my childhood. Next up is Adam Sandler's, I believe, his first major role in a uh, motion picture, Billy Madison. Was this before Airheads? Uh, whatever. Billy Madison, he's a spoiled rich kid, basically buys his way through school, then he gets in trouble, then he's got to pass a bunch of classes. It's kind of like back to school is what it kind of reminds me of, back to school with uh, Rodney Dangerfield, but not really. Whatever. Very, very early Adam Sandler movie. Uh, pretty good. I remember this being pretty funny. This came out, I think, right before Matt, uh, Happy Gilmore. I think it was that. This was before Happy Gilmore. Whatever. Really cool Adam Sandler movie. Very old at this point. Uh, what year was this? Do I see the year? I don't see the year. But this movie's old as hell. Like I said, I think this is the, uh, the first Adam Sandler movie that he did other than maybe airheads very cool yeah oh how far that guy has come all right next up is johnny depp in black mass this is also a true story he is let me see who he is don't remember the guy's name whitey whitey something whitey bulger james whitey bulger he was like a um irish uh leader of like the irish mafia or something like that if i'm not mistaken Really cool movie, and this is basically a biopic about him. In the 1970s, South Boston FBI agent John Connolly persuades Irish mobsters James Whitey Bulger uh, persuades Irish mobster James Whitey Bulger, portrayed by Johnny Depp, to collaborate with the FBI in order to eliminate their common enemy, the Italian mob. Black Mass tells the story of this unholy alliance which spiraled out of control, allowing Bulger to evade law enforcement while es uh, escalating his tower, or excuse me, power, escalating his power to be become one of the most notorious gangsters in U.S. history. This is really cool, and based on a true story. And a couple of years after this movie came out, maybe it wasn't even a couple of years, uh, Whitey Bulger uh, was killed in jail, prison, whatever. Very, very good movie, though. If you like Johnny Depp and you haven't seen that movie, check that out. It's freaking badass. All right, and finally, Harrison Ford in Blade Runner. Recently redid, uh, remade this movie in the last three, four years, maybe five years at the most with Jared Leto in it. I saw this movie when I was a very young kid. It was on, uh, I used to see it on like Cinemax back in the day. This was back in the time when like The Road Warrior came out and Blade Runner was out. And cable TV was first like becoming a big thing in the area I grew up in. I, I, Sci-fi masterpiece here. Visually, vi, blah, blah. Visually spectacular. 
intensely action-packed and powerfully prophetic, prophetic since its debut. Blade Runner dazzles in Ridley Scott's definitive final cut, including extended scenes and previously unseen special effects. In a signature role as 21st century detective Rick Deckard, Harrison Ford brings his masculine yet vulnerable presence to this stylish noir thriller. In a future of high-tech poss uh, high possibility, soared by, or excuse me, soured by urban and society decay. Soured by urban, yeah, soured by urban and societal decay. Deckard hunts for a fugitive, mer uh, hunts for fugitive, murderous, mur first day with my new mouth, Jesus, murderous replicants and is drawn into a mystery woman whose secrets may undermine his soul. I actually recently was telling my wife that I wanted to watch this and the remake. I have not seen this movie. I bet you it's been 25 years since I've seen Blade Runner. I do not remember it very well at all. Uh, I remember it being pretty damn cool, and I'm surprised I don't own this on Blu-ray. But I want to check that out and the remake out. I have the remake, and that's the last one for tonight. So I'm assuming that the next time I do the next section of my non-horror collection, the first movie will be the remake of Blade Runner. All right, that's it. I hope you'd enjoy this. Uh, that you enjoyed this video and all of my stammering and trouble reading with my bad eyes and sitting in the dark. I'm going to get out of here. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like this video and you've been enjoying my content up to this point, please do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and ring that bell. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other, have a kick-ass day, and thank you for watching. Later, folks. See you in the next one.